really, I mean, does it affect them at all when people say they have to outscore everybody they play and they have to put up a ridiculous amount of points, yards, that kind of thing? I think the big thing for us is really we started uh, the spring with the offense and a team meeting, an offensive meeting just like we did, you know, the last two or three years. And, hey, it's time to start over. Now, do we have the potential to be really special? Yes, we do. Um, you know, why did we have the success we had last year? Because we had a lot of guys that bought in that were willing to work, and we've got to start over. Yes, there is some retention, um, but really we need to start over. And uh, that's really going back to the fundamentals, the technique, you know, all those type of things, and really focus, focusing on the little things more than the big things. Because if we can get consumed by the little things, um, you know, then I think it will take our attention away from all the other things that are out there. But, I mean, these guys know uh, what they have the potential to do, but they also know it's a very fine line. I mean, we go back and watch all the cut-ups, you know, and there's, there's a lot of things, um, you know, through last season uh, that, you know, we're, we're very close in us having the success and winning a game or losing a game. So it's a very fine line. And, uh, but I really like uh, the way the, the guys have worked. Um, you know, don't see any complacency or anything like that. Uh, these guys have a good uh, fire, good work ethic, and uh, just going to work. And that's really what they've done uh, since they've been here, uh, this group of older group of uh, leaders. When you're too different for, for you and Tony as far as the way you guys do things? Uh, you know, I think having the entire offensive staff back uh, really helps. I mean, I think, you know, it's been documented. We work to get weather together really well. Uh, so I think everybody knows we're well, everything we're trying to do. It's been really smooth, and you know we challenged ourselves as coaches to, uh, to get better. And just like we challenge our players, Coach Sweeney always is challenging our staff to get better at what we're doing. Uh, we, we did that uh, kind of during the, the time off before spring practice. Uh, but we've got good chemistry on our staff, and I think that's contagious. And I think our players, um, you know, have good chemistry because of the chemistry that we're. Uh, hopefully uh, being a great example with. When you have seasons like Deshaun and, and even Wayne had last year, people say, well, we expect them to be even better. How do you improve on what were just absolutely great seasons? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing is, like we said, just go back to work. and you, you don't you know, worry about any of that stuff. I mean, Coach Sweeney did a great job in the team meeting the other day. He asked our players to name the last five Heisman Trophy winners. You know, they couldn't get past the last two. Nobody remembered any of the others. I mean, no, nobody cares uh, all the awards that Deshaun won last year. That's over. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a new year and a new focus. And, um, and so that's really where, where our attention is, is, is really putting everything from last year to bed and really focusing on this year. And, you know, how can we get better? How can we improve? How can we finish when we get those opportunities to finish uh, where maybe we didn't there in that last game? You know, that's all things that we're talking about this spring that will be focused as we go out uh, through spring and summer. Do you think about how blessed you've been as a position coach with the guys you've had since 2010? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, my, the, the one advantage that I had growing up is my dad always told me uh, to be sure that you're recruiting great players at your position. And that's something I learned at a very uh, early stage. And, you know, we've been very fortunate to have some uh, high-quality players. And I think whenever they come and have success, you know, it helps recruiting the, that next group because they see the success that, that you've had. But, you know, I give these guys a lot of credit. And I think our guys in our room, in the wide receiver room, they take a lot of pride in the success and accomplishments that the wide receivers before them have had at Clemson. And I've told them it's, it's not your job to, to uh, you know, maintain that. It's your job to improve on that. And, and that's really what they're trying to do every day. And, you know, we get text messages from those former guys all the time, texting me, texting the other wideouts asking how they're doing and encouraging the guys. And uh, so, you know, I, I feel very blessed uh, to have a great group. And, and to be honest, not just great players, but also high, high character guys that's fun to go work with. Sometimes a wide receiver position can be a position with a lot of prima donnas. And we've been very fortunate uh, to have hungry, humble, hardworking guys at that position. And uh, that's what we look for in the recruiting process. To make it change the dynamic to have, have Mike back. Yeah, it, it makes a big difference. Um, you know, I mean, he's he's done a really good job in six weeks, uh, that, or six practices uh, here in spring practice. Um, you know, he's a big force over there in the boundary. Uh, makes a lot of plays. Is long, tough guy to cover, and uh, you know, adds another element uh, for us over there in our offense. And I think, you know, the fact that you know Deshaun and Wayne, those running backs, you know, the success that we had last year running the ball. 
is uh, hopefully going to create some problems for the defense. Uh, once Mike gets out there, and, you know, they're going to have to make decisions. Are they going to you know, stay in one high and, and uh, let him be one-on-one -on -one with the corner? Or are they going to stay too high? And, and then you got really good numbers to run the ball. So I've been really pleased with uh, Mike's attitude, his work ethic. I haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of rust out of him, to be honest. You know, first couple of days, he kind of got winded trying to get back into fo football shape. Uh, but I'm really pleased with, with uh, where he is mentally and, and physically. And uh, he's got a chance to, to be a dynamic player in this offense and, uh, and have a huge impact for us next year. Do you have to bring him along slowly because of the, the severity of that injury? Uh, I think more than anything, you know, our message is when you're out there, you got to go full speed and then let us control the time when you're out there and when you're not. And there'll be certain type time in, in live, uh, you know, a few times when we go scrimmage and, and we're in live action and stuff like that where we may pull him out and hold him out and let him watch a little bit. But really, he's getting 95% of everything we're doing. He's right out there in the middle of it. And uh, so the message to him is when you're out there, you go, you got to go full speed. And that's the only way you can get better. And then let us kind of control and, and protect you along the way uh, this spring. That's it. What is your, your thoughts on the offensive line through six practices? Yeah, uh, really pleased. I think uh, after our first half scrimmage uh, Monday, uh, the one comment that we had was this probably the fewest missed assignments from that group. And that's something you look for early. You've got a lot of guys uh, moving in, playing different positions, moving around, and uh, really good communication. Uh, very few missed assignments. Uh, they, they're targeted at the right spots. I mean, I think that's one reason that we went from 34 sacks in 2014 to 17 sacks in uh, this past year is just communication and guys knowing who they have. And, um, you know, that starts with the leadership. I mean, Jake Laramo does a great job. Uh, can't be said enough what he brings to us uh, there at the front, uh, making all the calls and being a leader uh, for that entire group. But really pleased uh, where they are. And uh, I mean, chemistry with offensive line is something that uh, maybe is, is underrated a little bit. And um, it just seems like these guys are on the same page. They take a lot of pride in what they do. Had a great relationship with Deshaun. And uh, I mean, they go to work every day. So really pleased with where they are. And I uh, think we have a chance to be better than we were uh, last year. Some of, the, positive. some of the words have been used about the young offensive line and you know, foundation and chemistry, as you just said. What about intelligence? Like, how, how smart do they have yep. to be at 18, 19 to yeah, go? I think to... offensive line, I mean, typically the closer you get to the football, the harder it is to play as a young player. You know, as a wide receiver, it may be a little bit easier for those guys because of all the seven on seven stuff these guys do since the seventh grade. But offensive line, I mean, they're, they're in there blocking some grown men and one thing we're fortunate is we got some really good guys on the defensive front so there's you know, I feel bad for that second third group having to block uh, Dexter Lawrence and a few of those guys in there it's not real fair um, but you know I, yes I mean I think uh, you know I'm, I'm really pleased uh, with all those young guys uh, you know Tremaine Ankrum is a guy that's shown up uh, really early you know I was uh, having lunch with my dad the other day talking to him you know back when he was coaching the OL Sometimes those freshmen that just got here, they wouldn't get reps uh, for about six or eight months. And now these guys in here in their fourth and fifth practice are out there making the right calls and uh, doing a really good job getting a lot of reps. I think it's one thing that Coach Sweeney has done that's really helped us is repping three groups, where maybe a lot of places just rep two groups. Coach Sweeney's real big on repping three groups, getting all those guys reps. And that's the only way you get better is getting reps. Uh, but both you know, Sean and Tremaine coming in, um, you know, those are kind of the new guys this spring uh, that have really had to, to learn and to pick up everything for the first time. Um, I think both of those guys are going to be really good players for us in the future if they continue the way that they've started. Is, it, is that because of the pace of practice that you all can, can rep three groups? Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, we, we get three groups. We get anywhere from 10 to 12 plays in five minutes um, by getting three groups. And, uh, you know, it definitely helps. And that's one thing Coach Sweeney is always pushing. We don't do a lot of conditioning after practice because of the way that we practice is at a very fast tempo. Um, and, you know, it helps everybody, not just the offensive line, but skill guys, quarterbacks, running backs. I mean, there's, there's not many guys walking off our field uh, each day that, that didn't get a good day's work. And uh, I think that really helps us throughout the entire season. Does that make it easier when a guy goes down yeah. to bring everybody up? Absolutely. Like you, you don't have a, a new guy going in there getting reps for the first time. And, uh, and then also we, we cross train a lot of guys as much as we can at the skill positions. You know, I mean, a guy like Artavis Scott, I mean, he's been moved around. 
Uh, Hunter Renfro, you know, moved in the boundary to nine men the other day. Whenever we pulled Mike out, Trevion was out, uh, you know, with a minor injury. So, you know, Renfro gets in there in the boundary and, and goes to work and makes plays. And so, you know, and that's what's going to happen in the season. You're going to have injuries and, and guys are going to have to be able to move around and play different spots. And when you're repping a lot of guys, you have more opportunities to move guys around and cross train. Anyone inching forward, number two RB? Uh, I'll let Tony kind of make that comment. <laughs> I, I spend all my time out there with those guys, chasing my guys around. And, you know, but I, I have seen that group work. I think, you know, it's been said before, but we got a chance really to have four really good players there um, this spring. All those guys are getting better, and uh, see a lot of guys making plays. But you know, Tony's pretty hard on those guys, and so he he, he probably would say no right now. They're all <laughs> in the same area. Nobody's really made that next step, but. Uh, we're really excited about that group. You know, specifically about Adam Choice, and just because it's been a year and a half now since the ACL. Yeah, I mean Adam's. Uh, I mean the ACL all depends on the guy that's coming back from the injury. And guys come back differently, and a big part of it is how they rehab, and how maybe mentally tough they are going into that rehab. How they attack that rehab process, and you know Adam really approached it a lot like Deshaun did, and uh, you know I mean he he went full speed, and, you know. Danny Poole and those guys were having to slow him down rather than speed him up. So I think he's had the right mentality. Uh, he was able to get back last year and uh, did a good job for our scout team. Uh, but he's a guy that uh, has done a good job this spring. And uh, he looks faster and he looks like he's getting uh, healthier. And the big thing is just getting the reps and understanding all the different things that we're asking him to do uh, coming off the year, off the scout team. But uh, you know, we think he's a guy that's a natural runner. and. Um, boys for a good year. What about the guys behind Jordan at tight end? Anybody kind of yeah, a good spring so there, There's a lot of competition there. Uh, DJ Greenlee is a guy that's probably not talked about a lot uh, that's shown a lot of good improvement um, catching the ball well. His routes have improved. You know, but really, you know, all those guys are probably in that, that same group looking for somebody to separate. Uh, probably too early. Really haven't seen anybody really separate themselves completely from that pack. But that's one thing we're looking for this spring once we get through the end of spring is really to find out who that number two guy is. And, uh, you know, one day it might be Milan, the next day it's uh, Garrett Williams, the next day it might be uh, Cannon Smith. So it's kind of rotated around. So it's going to be the consistency uh, over the 15 practices we're looking for. Has anybody created any separation at backup quarterback? Uh, no. I would say those guys are getting a lot of reps. Um, those guys are getting some reps with the ones and the twos. Um, but I'd say it's still probably too early. Um, I think you know, all those guys are probably getting equal reps behind Deshaun right now.